Cervical disc replacement is an effective treatment for radiculopathy and myelopathy. However, with any surgical procedure, complications can arise. This presentation will describe how I manage patients with failed cervical disc replacement. Ideally, the best candidates for cervical disc replacement are very motivated individuals who've maintained their normal anatomy and have non-painful facet joints. Long-term studies have found that disc replacement functions at the equivalent rate as a fusion in appropriately selected patients. Short-term complications from disc replacement are very similar to those we see after a cervical fusion. However, there are some unique long-term complications, including abnormal bone growth, metal wear or debris, indolent or chronic infection. The devices can break or move. Sometimes they collapse or subside into the bone. As well, when you place a disc replacement, which is mobile, you can lose the normal alignment of the spine. Normally, the cervical spine is in lordosis, but we have seen cases where the devices collapse into a position of kyphosis, or forward bending. The surgical treatments for failed disc replacement are numerous, including an operation through the back of the neck to make more room for the nerves with or without fusion, removing the device and putting in a new device, or in circumstances where the device has clearly failed, it's either moved out of place, is malpositioned, has collapsed into the bone, or there's pressure on the nerves, removing the device or explanting the old device and converting it to a fusion is the only viable option. Depending on the amount of bone left after removing the device, a corpectomy may be required. When I see patients with failed disc replacement, I have a very specific methodologic approach to address their problems, including numerous imaging tests and, in certain circumstances, evaluation of their vocal cord function, testing with nerve tests such as EMG, and various imaging testing including CT, CT myelogram, or MRI. During our revision anterior surgery to remove a disc replacement, we take special steps to reduce injury risk to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Neurologic monitoring is utilized, and we are prepared to send tissue for pathologic assessment and culture. Part of our educational process prior to surgery includes a thorough discussion with the patient and the patient's family regarding their expectations as well as our traditional outcomes with surgery of this nature. This first case is a gentleman in his mid-30s who came to me a few years after having two-level disc replacement after a work injury. His physical exam showed weakness consistent with his levels of surgery. Imaging testing revealed forward flexion or kyphosis at C4-5 and erosion or lysis at the end plate of the disc replacements. Post myelogram CT identified disc herniations and facet arthropathy with compression of the nerves. A diagnostic facet injection confirmed pain coming from the C5-6 facet. During revision surgery, our intraoperative findings included very easy removal of the C5-6 prosthesis. There was no difficulty removing the end plate and there was no bone growth into the device. As well, when we removed the disc replacement to assess adequacy of decompression, dye was placed into the space that the decompression was performed to ensure that we had adequately removed all the bone on the neural elements. Tissue was sent to pathology revealing evidence of indolent infection and metal debris. This patient, case two, is in his mid-30s. He came to see me a few years after three-level disc replacement after a work injury. 
His x-rays identified a number of pathologies and diagnostic testing verified that he had failed cervical syndrome at the region of his prior surgery. Facet injections confirmed a component of his pain was coming from the facets in the region of his prior disc replacement. During the revision surgery, the device at C67 was very easy to remove. There was no bone ingrowth, even though this device had been in place for a number of years. There had developed a significant amount of fibrous tissue or scar between the device and the bone. This tissue was sent to pathology and microbiology, confirming both metal debris as well as an indolent infection. This final case is a patient that I treated seven or eight years ago with a combination of disc replacement and fusion or hybrid technology. She did very well and returned to her job full duty. She was on vacation and was rear-ended in a high-energy, high-speed motor vehicle accident. This resulted in both fracture of the bone as well as displacement and damage to the implant in the cervical spine at C4-5. Revision surgery was performed and due to the damage done to the vertebrae or bone, a corpectomy was required and the fusion was extended from C3 to C5. She did very well and fused after surgery and returned to work with a 30 plus point improvement in her neck disability index. Cervical disc replacement is safe and effective. Most patients who have cervical disc replacement do well. However, there is a less than 5% complication rate. In patients who have problems after their disc replacement, there may be a treatment to provide them with relief. I have an evidence-based methodology to evaluate and treat these patients, and we've had success treating them in my practice.